Now it's time for today's perspective on the programme and The Matrix, Star Wars, The Day the Earth Stood Still, Terminator. All movies that have shown and promoted, if you like, the idea of artificial intelligence, computers and machines that can think for themselves and in some of the films even fight against the human race. But does such a thing really exist? Could such a thing ever really exist? Well, my guest today is perhaps the ideal person to answer that question. Luke Julia is Vice President of Innovation at Samsung, best known as the creator of Siri, the machine that recognises your voice, seen by some as proof that artificial intelligence is on its way. Well, he grew up here in France before moving to the US. He's also worked for Apple, Hewlett Packard, and had his own startup as well. This, though, is his new book here in France, L'intelligence artificielle n'existe pas, or Artificial Intelligence Doesn't Exist. Thanks very much for being with us on the programme today. Um, some might say you're a bit of a spoil sport. I mean, uh, you've been hailed by proving, if you like, that artificial intelligence does exist, but you say it doesn't. So what I wanted to say basically is that the artificial intelligence that you just described, the one that is, you know, in the films, you know, in the movies, the Hollywood artificial intelligence, this one doesn't exist. And with the techniques that we are using today, which are basically, you know, mathematics and statistics, it will never exist. Okay, there won't be anything like, you know, this superior intelligence that ever. is going to ever. Okay. With the techniques that we are using. You know, I cannot say about tomorrow if we do some biology or something else, maybe. But with the current techniques, it's impossible. So we can do some cool stuff. We are doing a lot, a lot of cool stuff. You know, the, what we call machine learning, deep learning, what is, you know, uh, the speech recognition like Siri and stuff like that. It's cool. It's doing a lot of, of good for humanity, you know, and uh, in medicine and stuff like that. But the Hollywood one that is scary, I mean, we shouldn't be scared about that. It's just a tool. It's a tool that we are uh, building and it's a tool that we are controlling. And if we ever do something wrong with it, it's our fault. It's not the tool itself. That so there's no way the tool could ever take over and... No, no, no way. Completely impossible. Completely impossible. With, because in, everything is based on data that exists today. Mm. Everything is based on rules that we are giving to the machine. We are programming the machines. So we could program the machine in order to do something wrong. We could have bugs. That's okay. But the machine itself will never think the way we do. And I know you say that all this comes from um, something that, that happened years ago, right back in 1956. Yeah, exactly. So the artificial intelligence, actually the term, the, the words, you know, came out in, uh, in uh, July uh, 1956, when a group of scientists, you know, decided that maybe they were close to find something that was a model of the brain, a model of the cell, a model of neurons, you know. So, so they, they said, OK, so we did, you know, have an equation, basically, that is doing this thing that looks like a neuron, you know. So it's an extension, by extension, a brain, and by extension, artificial intelligence. But but very quickly, you know, after five or six years, they realized that, you know, no way. It was, you know, way too difficult to really uh, have a model of the brain and to do things you know, that a human can do. They were trying to do the very difficult thing at the time. The thing at the time it was to try to do, uh, to recognize natural language, which is most likely the most difficult thing that can be done, you know, in terms of, uh, of activity, of our activity, the human activity. Animals, you know, don't talk. There is a reason. But you managed to do that, haven't you, with Siri? So, but it, it's fake in the sense that, you know, we just recognize whatever um, the, the thing what, that was pre-programmed. Siri, you know, acts in domains. In sp some very specific domains, it's going to be good enough to achieve some tasks that we defined. But if you ask Siri something that is totally out of the domain, Siri will know, will know to do anything with that, right? So, it's not like us, you know, if you... Uh, talk about something totally out of context with me right now, I'm going to be able you know, to process it and to do something with it. Siri and the other guys you know, cannot do that. One example you give in the book is, um, is chess, isn't it? I mean, you talk about how uh, the computer that defeated the chess giant uh, Kasparov at chess, Deep Blue. I mean, as you say in the book, it doesn't consider, does it? No. So the, it was in 1985, right? So it's pretty early. And we said, oh, it's an incredible chess. You know, it's an intelligent game. So if a machine you know, can play the chess, you know, it's more intelligent than ourselves. The reality is that in chess, there are 10 uh, the power 50 uh, uh, solutions, if you will. So it was just a question of putting every single solution in the memory of the computer. And then, you know, it has many more capabilities than I have because I cannot have those 10 to the power of 50, you know, solutions in my head. So it's just knowledge. 
it's not intelligence. Mm. The other big worry, of course, with computers and the way they're going nowadays and, and machines as well, is that they're going to take over human lives, human jobs as well. That the, the number of jobs that humans will be able to find is going to dramatically go down. Do you think that's the case? So, yes and no. So the yes is, at the time T, it's going to be obvious that some uh, jobs are going to be replaced. It happened, you know, uh, along the, the past centuries, right? I mean, it, was, it always happened. But the reality is that those jobs that are replaced, usually they are replaced by something else that is going to be in the same area, but that is going to be better job for the same capabilities for the people, and it's going to be basically more jobs around that too. There is something you know, that is very uh, obvious to me is that in France, for instance, we did, uh, I think, miss the, the revolution um, at, in, uh, in the 80s when robotics you know, came in the, in the industry. And we missed our industry, basically. If you look in Germany, in Germany, you know, they did go robots, with robots, right? We didn't in France because we were afraid that it was going to replace you know, jobs. They did in Germany, we didn't. We lost our industry altogether. And Germany, not only they didn't lose their industry, but their employment rate, you know, is very low compared to us. Mm. So we need to think about that. You're quite critical in the book, aren't you, about France? I I'm critical because I love it, right? I mean, uh, you know, I, of course. And I'm seeing some things that we did wrong that I think we are doing pretty, I mean, much better now. You know, in the past five years, I would say, with the French tech and stuff like that, you know, that was done by Fleur Pellerin here. I think that we are doing much better in terms of exposing our cap capabilities in terms of mathematics and, and innovation. So, but that's true that for me, it's frustrating that I see, you know, in the Silicon Valley, all those French guys all over the place that are succeeding, you know, doing some incredible stuff. I mean, we should have been able yeah. to do that. In you France. talk in the book, don't you, about how you, you came out of university and, and you went straight to the US because you just yeah. thought here in France, it, it's not going to. And part of that, you say, is to do with the French character as well. And, and that um, coming up with ideas and bouncing ideas off people just doesn't really happen or didn't really happen. Didn't really. I think that is better now with this French check thing, you know, for the past five years. But at the time, that's true that it was very, very difficult, you know, to, to basically compete, you know, in a, in a good way. You've come back to France now, though, haven't you? I'm actually not. I'm, I'm in the States, but, uh, but I have opened uh, uh, an office in Paris mm. to take advantage of those, you know, very smart engineers uh, for, for a lab for Samsung. Yeah, and does that, that please you, being able to, to come back here as well and, and set that up here in your home country? Of course, yeah. I mean, uh, you know, I know the capabilities of those guys, and they are incredible. I mean, our engineers are just incredible. So, yes, I'm very happy to be able to uh, work with them, and somehow, you know, I'm happy to give something back to my country as well. Good to end on that. Luke, Julia, thanks very much for coming in and talking to us today. So that's the book in French, uh, L'intelligence artificielle n'existe pas. You were telling me just before we came in, it's coming out in English today. Tomorrow, yeah. Tomorrow, in fact. OK, tomorrow. So you can get, get hold of it uh, in English as well. Thanks very Thank much for coming much. in and talking to us uh, on the programme today.